Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord. approach Him with praise and thanksgiving, and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. The Lord is God. The mighty God, the great kings over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hand. bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God and we are His people, the block He shepherds. As your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Mary by Massa, they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my words. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured and suffering. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, there are people whose hearts go astray, and they do know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest.
my suffering. Come, Come quickly to my aid. Your 
and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we call upon your name. For our foes, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning and now and will be forever Amen Look, O Lord, Lord, and see see my suffering suffering. come Come quickly quickly to my aid God, God is my Savior, I trust in Him and shall not fear. The Lord Lord has fed fed us with the finest wheat. He has filled with honey from from the rock. rock. Bring out your joy to God our strength. Shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. and our 
from the letter to the Hebrews. We see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, that through God's gracious will, he might taste death for the sake of all men. Indeed, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory God, for whom and through whom all things exist, should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. From every tribe, and tongue and people and nation you brought us back to God glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit my Lord you brought us back to God all stand. I have, have longed long to eat this meal with you before I suffer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Oh, 
To proclaim forgiveness to those in bondage, let us humbly call upon the eternal priest. Lord, have mercy on us. You went up to Jerusalem to suffer and so into enter into your glory. Bring your church to the Passover feast of heaven. Lord, Lord have mercy on us. You were lifted high on the cross and pierced by the soldier's lance. Heal our wounds. Lord, have mercy on us. The cross, the tree of life, give its fruit to those in baptism. Lord, have mercy on us. On the cross, you forgive the repentant thief, forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy on us. Pater Nostrum, qui es in genis, sanctificetum omen tu, adveniam venium tu, via voluntas tu, Amen. 
God of infinite compassion, to love you is to made holy. Fill our hearts with your love. By the death of your Son, you have given us hope born of faith. By his rising again, fulfill this home in the perfect love of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. May I have the attention of all the concelebrating priests. Some notes on the flow of our celebration this morning. May I request um, our jubilarians and Benjamins to um, join in the processional, um, the entrance procession. We have for our 25 years jubilarian. Father Emilio Ascanio, Father Roderick Castro, Father Reynaldo Daguitera, Father Joseph Feng, Father Jason Laguerta, Father Nolan Ke, Father Emmanuel Regalado, and Father Godwin Tatlonghari. For our 55 years jubilarian, Monsignor Tomas Gonzalez, and for the 60 years um, jubilarians, Monsignor Severino Anatalio, Father Alfonso Erastin, and Father Luis Lumbreras Sierra OP. May we request them to join in the entrance procession. Just few notes on the um, consecration of the oil. On page 29 of the prayer booklet that you have, for the consecration of chrism, there is a rubrical prescription at the middle of the prayer. All concelebrants extend their right hand toward the chrism without saying anything until the end of prayer. So we ask you that when the um, presider, his eminence, uh, comes to this part, uh, to extend your right hand towards the chrism. Um, also, the, after the Mass, the holy oils will be distributed to the priests. Um, if the parish priest or the chaplain cannot redeem their holy oils, may we ask them to um, give authorization letter to the lay delegate who will claim for the holy oils. If there is no authorization letter, the holy oils will, um, will not be given to any lay people who would request for the holy oils. Um, you will notice that when we will distribute the holy oils, the quantity of um, the oil for the sick is lesser than the quantity uh, of chrism. The amount of chrism is more because it's only 
the bishop who consecrates it. But for the holy oil used for the sick, um, it's lesser because if you run out of um, oil for the sick, you can bless the oil of the sick when you need to bless them. So you can. So the quantity is, is um, lesser. May we request all concelebrating priests that after the um, Mass, um, please leave your chasubles um, on your seat. The mother butlers will pick them for us. And also kindly leave all the prayer booklets um, on your seat because uh, we will still be using this for future uh, use. Um, I think that's all. So thank you and happy feast day to all the priests.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in proximity of the celebration of the Christ who died, who was buried and resurrected, the heart and center of the entire history of salvation, we are gathered by virtue of the baptismal consecration and ministerial priesthood to proclaim God's marvelous works and to give thanks to the Father who in His Son, Jesus Christ, makes us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people whom He acquired for His own. Even the oil and the chrism which we bless in this Eucharist, remind us of the multiple gifts which the Father, through His Son, in the Holy Spirit, entrusts to the ministry of the Church. The common priesthood, the ministerial priesthood, and the comfort and the liberation of those in grave sickness and in the face of death. My beloved brothers in the priesthood, my beloved priests, God loves us very much, unworthy though we are, and we are the first to confess our unworthiness. God has given us a share in His Son's consecration to the priestly service in His Church. God loves us very much, that is why we are priests. Let us thank and glorify God for His immense and wonderful love. Let us beg for His forgiveness for failing to be faithful to His love. Let us ask for the strength to be true to our calling, to be God's faithful witnesses in the world. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
like Chelsea's day Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in this world. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Pagbasa mula sa aklat ni Propeta Isaías. Pinuspos ako ng Panginoon ng kanyang Espiritu. Hinirang niya ako upang ang magandang balitay dalhin sa mahihirap. Pagalingin ang sugat ng puso, palayain ang mga bihag at bilanggo. Sinugo niya ako upang ibalitang Ngayoy panahon ng iligtas ng Panginoon ang mga tao na hinirang niya. At upang lupigin lahat ang mga kaaway, ako ay sinugo upang aliwin ang nangungulila, upang ang tumatangis ng mga taga siyon ay paligayahin. Sa halip ng lungkot, awit ng pagpuri, yaong aawitin upang ang langis ng kagalakan ay ihatid sa tanan. Ang Diyos na Panginoon iingatan sila at kakalingain. Ngunit kayo na may siyang maglilingkod sa Diyos na Panginoon, kayo ay gagawin niyang saserdote. Ang kayamanan ng ibang bansa'y inyong makakamtan. Aariin inyong may galak sa buhay. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, Ako'y namumuhi sa pagkakasala at pang-aalipin. Gawang katarungan ang mahal sa akin. Gagantimpalaan ko ang mga taong tapat sa akin. Walang hanggang tipan ang aking gagawin. Itong lahi nila ay makikilala sa lahat ng bansa. Pati anak nila'y makikilala rin sa gitna ng madla. Sila'y kikilanling anak ng Panginoon saan man makita at tatawaging bayang pinagpala, hinirang ng Panginoon. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who fierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Oh, oh. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please remain standing. Your Eminence, Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle, Ruprefect of the Dicastery for Evangelization, Your Eminence, Gaudencio Cardinal Rosales, Archbishop Emeritus of Manila, Your Excellency, Most Reverend Charles Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, Venerable Brothers, in the Episcopate, dear brothers in the priesthood, seminarians, persons in consecrated life, mga ginigiliw kong kapatid kay Kristo. Purihin natin ang Panginoon na tumitipon at nagsusugo sa atin bilang kanyang bayan at humirang sa atin na mapabilang sa hanay na mga hari, pari at propeta. Pasalamatan din natin ang biyaya ng pagkapari na inihandog sa lahat ng kristyanong nabinyagan at sa mga lingkod na naordinahan. My dear brothers and sisters, the Christmas that we celebrate today signifies the fullness of the priesthood of the bishop and the unity of the priests with him. Allow me to primarily address today my brother priests. My dear brothers, 
mother, brother priests. As we prepare to renew our priestly commitment on this year of prayer as designated by Pope Francis in preparation for the 2025 Jubilee year, Pilgrims of Hope, let us take this opportunity to remember the value of prayer in our priestly lives. Allow me to share two points about priestly prayer, intimacy with God and solidarity with God's people. First, priestly prayer is to foster intimacy with God. In the first reading of the Gospel, the servant of God says of himself, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes, ministry begins and finds fulfillment in our life in the Spirit who is the very presence of God within and among us. The indwelling of the Spirit of God in us is the grace of God's intimacy with us, alive and dynamically present in our lives, loving us, guiding us, helping us, healing us, and sanctifying us. Ibig ng Diyos na malapit siya sa atin, malapit sa puso natin, na sa mismong kalooban natin. God wants to be intimately close to us. But, do we respond to God's offer of intimacy? While God reveals Himself to us, do we strive to listen to Him attentively so that we can know Him more deeply? Do we reveal our hearts to God more openly? Do we strive to encounter and engage God's loving presence within and around us? Do we collaborate with God's movements and invitations by discerning and obeying His will? In other words, do we pray constantly and do we pray well? My dear brother priests, prayer is the way of intimacy with God. For us priests, our prayer life is our love life. Kaya ang paring walang prayer life ay paring walang love life. At ang taong walang love life ay taong walang life. Ikamamatay ng pari kung hindi siya magdasal at magmahal sa Diyos. Ang paring kulang sa dasal ay paring papatay-patay. Kulang sa liwanag, kulang sa lakas, at kulang sa ligaya sa paglilingkod. Sa ganitong kalagayan, matutukso ang pari na magkunwaring buhay sa pamamagitan ng paghahanap ng pagmamahal sa kung ano-anong makamundo na hindi naman talaga nagbibigay ng totoong pagmamahal. Kaya't sa huli, ang paring hindi nagdadasal ay nawawala at nagwawala. 
God is the first and forever love of a priest. And prayer is our mode of fostering that intimate love with God. If we fail to pray, we will end up reducing our priesthood to a mere task or role. We would see God as an oppressive master or boss. The benefits and privileges that coincide with our service, we would see them as earnings and entitlements. Eventually, we would feel burdened and burnt out by our priesthood with an underlying resentment that is expressed as an insatiable demand for compensation and perks. Pero kung patuloy at wagas na nagdadasal ang pari, ang paglilingkod niya ay magmumula at hantong sa lumalagong pagmamahal at pagkakaibigan sa Diyos. A priest in prayer is a priest in love. And a priest in love with God is a priest who is fully alive, buhay na buhay. His priestly ministry is born of an ever-deepening intimacy with God, nurtured by fidelity in prayer. His ministry is not merely a task, but, but truly a blessing from our Lord. His motivation for service is not just a sense of duty, but deep gratitude for God's mercy and love. He sees the Lord not as an overbearing boss, but as a friend who invites and empowers. He sees the benefits that coincide with ministry as gifts to be shared rather than entitlements to be possessed. Priestly prayer fosters his deep intimacy with God. Second, priestly prayer is always in solidarity with God's people. In the second reading, it is revealed that Jesus imparted the priesthood unto the people of God. The priesthood is given not primarily to individuals, but to the church. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Therefore, a priest never prays by himself. Whenever he prays, even in solitude, he prays with God's praying people and for God's praying people. Ang dasal ng pari ay laging kasama ang bayan ng Diyos mula sa bayan ng Diyos at alang-alang sa bayan ng Diyos. His prayer is not confined to his own issues or concerns, nor does a priest pray with grand obstructions and other worldly thoughts, which may be intelligent or consoling, but are actually detached from the concrete experiences and longings of the people of God. His prayer does not, cut, does not cut him apart from God's people, but binds him closely and deeply 
with them. A priest who is truly intimate with God has profound solidarity with God's beloved people. My dear brother priests, the oil used to anoint our hands was produced from olives that have been pressed under severe constraint and stress. This reminds us that whenever we put our hands together to pray, we bring to God the reality of pressures and oppression that this cruel world brings upon our people. We pray with the lowly and the poor who long for good news. We pray with prisoners and captives who long for freedom. We pray with the blind who seek light. We pray with the brokenhearted who seek healing. We pray with those who mourn, begging God to grant them consolation and joy. We bring to our priestly hearts all their expressions of faith and devotion, their confessions of sins and doubts, the hungry grumblings of their bodies and souls, and the celebration, the celebrations of their gratitude and hope. We pour all this into the very heart of God, who is full of mercy and love. Ang dasal ng pari ay hindi nakukulong sa sarili, o lumilipad sa matataas na pag-iisip o damdamin, kundi nakaugnay sa kapwa at nakaapak sa lupa kung saan kumikilos ang Espiritu ng Diyos. Ang dasal ng pari ay laging magkasabay sa dilat, magkasabay na dilat at pikit. Dilat para makilatis at makita ang presensya ng Diyos sa mga karanasan ng bayan. At pikit para maharap at matanggap ang tunay na laman ng kalooban. And because genuine prayer should not bring us into isolation and stagnation, but towards synodal spirituality, it is important for us priests to be accountable before a spiritual companion who can help us discern our spiritual experiences and encourage us to be continually faithful in prayer. In this regard, it is of vital importance that each priest has and regularly sees a spiritual guide or spiritual companion. This will help ensure that each priest is accompanied on the spiritual journey. Priestly prayer leads to concrete solidarity with God's people. My dear brother priests, closeness to God and His people. This is the very mission life, and identity of us priests. And it is faithfulness to prayer that opens us to intimacy with God and solidarity with God's people. Let us pray without ceasing that God may sanctify our priestly hearts. And you, my dear brothers and sisters, Please pray for us, your priests, 
umaasa kami sa mga panalangin ninyo upang kami man ay lalong mapalapit sa Diyos at tunay na makipagkaisa sa inyo. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, most prayerful mother of priests, cover us in her mantle of care and pray for us always. Amen. May we request all the priests to please stand. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, when Christ our Lord conferred His priesthood on His apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people, the promises you once made. I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to Him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's Church, which prompted by love of Him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. I am. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls, I am. Please all stand. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests. that the Lord may pour out His gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest so that they may lead you to Him who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my loneliness, and that in your midst I may be made, day by day, a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Let us pray for the sick, aged, and dying priests. Beg the good Lord to give them strength to unite their suffering with the sufferings of Christ 
for their sanctification and of the church. May the Lord keep us all in His charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen.
Narito po at tanggapin nang ito ay babanalin ang langis na aming hain. May sakit ay paghalingin tulung at inyong hilumin. Narito po at tanggapin Nang ito ay pabanalin Ang langis na aming hain Magiging Christmas sa amin Bigay ng Diyos na butihin Brothers and sisters, with gratitude to God, Lord of life and of death, we gather the oil, fruit of the earth, and of human work. Let us bless the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent His Son to heal those who are brokenhearted and to cure our infirmities. Let us invoke the spirit of consolation that all those who shall be anointed with this oil may be freed from sin and receive consolation and life. God of all consolation, you chose and sent your only, your Son, to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith. Send the power of your Holy Spirit, the, Con the Consoler, into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless this oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit, and deliver them from every affliction. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, our Maker, source of all growth in holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Church. In the beginning, at your command, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees. From the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil would bring us in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men, and by the anointing with olive oil, you, may, you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses' brother anointed him priest. This too foreshadowed greater things to come. After your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only son, to be your only well-beloved son, in this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that Chrism takes its name and with chrism, you have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. May this chrism be a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam, and when they are anointed with this holy oil, make them temples of your glory radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through the sign of chrism, grant them ro royal, priestly, and prophetic honor, and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom. We ask this, through Christ our Lord.
Ut no veturus exus omnis, unciona Christmatis, ut sanetus ociata, dignitatis gloria.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul shall be healed. healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Together, let us thank the Lord for the gift of perseverance and dedication of our brother priests, the jubilarians. The citation. In thanksgiving to the Lord, the giver of all graces, the Archbishop, clergy, and the lay faithful of the Archdiocese of Manila gratefully recognize for his number of years in the priestly ministry as a faithful steward of the mysteries of Christ, God's people were reborn in the waters of baptism, nourished with the living bread and the word of life, renewed through the sacraments and led in faith, hope, and love. Given this 28th day of March in the year of the Lord 2024 at the minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, Manila Cathedral, Intramuros, Manila. Signed, Jose F. Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila. 25 years. Reverend Father Emilio A. Ascanio, LRMS. <clears throat> Reverend Father Roderick L. Castro. <clears throat> Reverend Father Rinaldo P. Daguitera, FDCC. Reverend Father Joseph Shenshi L. Feng, LRMS. Reverend Father Jason H. Laguerta. Reverend Father Nolan A. K. Reverend Father Emmanuel S. Regalado, LRMS. <clears throat> Reverend Father Godwin B. Tatlonghari. <clears throat> 55 years. Reverend Monsignor Tomas T. Gonzalez. Sixty years. Reverend Monsignor Severino Anatalio. Reverend Father Alfonso Eristain. Reverend Father Luis Lombreras Sierra, OP. Sixty five years. Reverend Monsignor Dalmacio G. Eusebio.
to God be the glory. Please stand. Dear brothers, from Christ, Master, Priest, and Pastor, we have been called to the order of the priesthood. In this Eucharistic celebration, we have willed to renew our commitment to live in a manner always worthy of the vocation we have received. We have also blessed the chrism and the oil of the sick to emphasize the mystery of the Church as a sacrament of Christ who sanctifies every reality and situation of life. To you, brother bishops and priests, they are now entrusted in order that through your ministry, divine grace, bringer of strength and life, may flow in the souls. Respect, venerate, and protect with particular care these oils, signs of God's grace, the persons, the places, and things that will be blessed by them may radiate the very holiness of God, who by a marvelous gift of His love has willed that in the sacramental signs the events of salvation history may be mystically renewed. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.